Very well detailed. So, yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with this part here. The cockpit is well laid out. True to life, true to deep, true to uh, form on the real thing. I believe they modeled it after a real thing. So I think they used one to model this. Now, in my opinion, this would not be exactly study level. This is close, but not exactly. In my opinion, study level is every switch, every knob does something and it does what it's supposed to do. So we start. I'm gonna move that. So we're going to go through the switches and the gauges. I'm going to go over the switches and the gauges and we will see what does what. So <clears throat> obviously here you have a pin and there's nothing here with the pin. Nothing happens here. Nothing happens with the vent. Now, you do have two vents here. I do believe these are vents. Uh, I am using a Blanca Super Viking Model 300 Pilots Operating Handbook. And I couldn't find what these things did in there either. I think I just... So, but I believe they're vents. This actually doesn't move at all. So when we go to the fuse, I mean not the fuse panel, but the circuit breaker panel, you can pop or you can manipulate. Most of the circuit breakers, ELT you can't break, autopilot servos, this one you can. This is the autopilot itself. ADSB, not so much. You can uh, manipulate the transponder. The audio panel, COM2, COM1, pitot heat, flaps, fuel pumps, not the alternator. Okay, the taxi lights, landing lights, panel lights, cabin, strobe, nav. Okay, so that is your circuit break breaker panel. So if you wanted to practice emergencies or get an emergency flow and you owned this particular airplane, and I actually do know someone that does, hopefully I'll get a chance to interview him regarding the uh, Blanca Super Viking, except his is turbocharged. Um, Hopefully, I'll get a chance to interview him about it and get an owner experience, but I digress. These pins down here don't appear to do anything. There's no tablet or anything here. So, of course, you can manipulate the autopilot. So, you can manipulate the autopilot. Okay, obviously you can manipulate the uh, GPS, the radios, the transponder, your audio panels right here, uh, your ADF. Now here's the thing, this is a vintage airplane, but they're phasing out the ADF, the FAA is phasing it out. So you know, down the line these things are going to pretty much be useless. So here is your nav 1 VOR, nav 2 VOR, your RPM gauge, fuel flow, manifold pressure, it's your vertical speed indicator of course, and you can manipulate the heading bug on your directional gyro. You can also set it as you need to. Altimeter you can manipulate of course, your uh, attitude indicator. Now, here's an interesting thing. The pilot's operating handbook, uh, all the speeds are done in miles per hour. So is this uh, airspeed indicator. The outside is miles per hour, the inside is not. The turn coordinator, that is for your ADF. This is your clock. You actually have two clocks. Okay. 
course, here are all your other gauges, your fuel gauges, uh, similar here, temperature, oil pressure, oil voltage. So this is a 12 volt system, so it can go between 12 and 14. Uh, if you hit 16 or you're down here in the 10s, you're gonna have a problem. Okay, you can't manipulate that. Pedal heat you can manipulate, but for some reason it just doesn't want to come off. I've experienced that on other airplanes. In reality, that should be able to be flipped off and on. There's your master. You can manipulate all of these things here, your lights. Now, also something you want to notice about the uh, Viking, and a lot of planes made around this time, is that these are brakes but they're only on the pilot side. The co-pilot doesn't have brakes. There's your prop pitch, of course, your throttle and your mixture. And if your feet get cold, you have uh, vents for your feet. You scroll down or you move down. I wanna move my throttle up so you can see this. This is the uh, cowl flaps. Cowl flaps are used to manage the uh, cooling of the engine. So what we can do here is we're going to take a look outside and I'm going to show you what the airplane looks like without cowl flaps. Out, and as you see, the cowl flaps are going to be right here. They're closed. You can go back in and open them all the way up. And they're opened up. So what happens is the air flows in and then exits out here. Now over here you do have uh, a pin that you can manipulate and then you get this. So it's a little placard I guess. open the window and I'm pretty sure at 140 miles an hour if you open this window it's going to end your game that's been my experience anyway now this is the back seat You've got your vintage half leather half cloth your baggage compartment is back there okay so this is the uh, oh and up here one more thing you have a light here, which you really can't manipulate, but this is your trim. So your nose up, nose down trim is actually done from the roof. And obviously that is your compass. And since I moved my, make sure, move my uh, directional gyro, make sure they're lined up before I start. So I'm going to go ahead and start the airplane. I'm going to use the checklist from the op pilot's operating handbook. And I intend to also put the uh, link to the pilot's operating handbook in the uh, description of this video. So if you want to download it, you can. Um, you can also just literally search for the Blanca Viking pilot's operating handbook and you'll find it. That's how I got it. But to make things easier, I'll, I'll see if I can get it to you via download. And I'll put that link in the description. All right, so checklist says electrical equipment off, and it is. Gear switch lever is down. There's your lever right here. These are your lights. It is down. Okay, so now it's going to say master switch on. So we'll turn the master switch on. Now we should have three green lights, and we do. Throttle is going to be full open. Mixture is going to be full rich. This is our mixture. Props are forward as well. Then we're going to take our fuel pump 
we are going to watch our fuel flow. What you're supposed to do is wait till this gets to the green and shut it off. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so now the mixture goes idle cut off. Throttle goes back to cracked or half an inch open. And then we check for the propeller, make, make sure no one's standing in front of the propeller. And no one's out here but us. The park brake is set, but you should also be on the brakes. But because the park brake is set, I don't think you're going to see any movement down here. Okay, so let's start the engine up. Electrical equipment off, gear switch is down, master switch is on, throttle full open, mixture full rich, it is. Fuel valve open or on. And then we're going to prime it with the fuel pump. Give it about a couple seconds. Okay, now we're going to take the mixture and we're going to move. Make sure that'll cut off. We're going to take our throttle and do about a half inch in. Then engage the starter. Also making sure we've got three greens here. We're gonna engage the starter. And we have startup. So now it says go to 1000 to 1200 RPM. We're going to be at 1,000 RPM, and I'm going to turn on my avionics. Let's see. Here's our clock. You can select what mode it is. So this is a stopwatch timer, countdown timer, and then that's a regular clock. Here, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my avionics. I'm going to turn on my transponder. So you can go on. This is my uh, Garmin 530. I'm going to hit acquire. Go let it acquire the satellites. Okay, so now it's squawking one, two, three, four. I want to squawk VFR because it's going to be a VFR flight. So when I push this button, it should go to one, two, zero, zero. There we go, one, two, zero, zero. So what you all know is in the real world, you should only have to push this button once. Here you got to do it twice, just something to know. Let's see. Uh, automated weather in case. Let's see what the altimeter setting is, so then I can set my altimeter. Echo Tango, automated weather observation two one zero zero Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature two eight C two point one zero C. Altimeter two nine nine zero. Kilo Sierra Echo Tango, automated weather observation. Okay, 2990. So now I'm going to go ahead and find a place to do a run up. So turn off the park brake. Now, what I'm finding interesting about this particular airplane in my system is that for some reason my system's actually a little it's got more stutters than normal 
so I do believe it's this airplane but I think it's my system if you have a higher end system then more than likely it's not going to happen to you but for me this has been happening and it does not happen with the other aftermarket or third party airplanes <clears throat> but it does it does it with this one so uh, I'm hoping maybe that they, when they do an update they optimize some of the coding for uh, the airplane but it's not too bad it really is only on the ground when I get in the air it's, it's a lot better so before takeoff, we're gonna say fuel's on the on the richest tank. But these actually, this setting is both. So it's taken from both the left and the right tank, which is a rare thing in low wing airplanes. Okay, so we'll go mixture full rich. It is, and then we're going to make sure our airplane the RPM is already full forward. This is not the turbo airplane, so on your POH, it's going to say turbo control full in. Well, we don't have a turbo control. Okay, auxiliary fuel pump is off. And now we're going to do a run up. We're going to bring our engine up to RPM up to 1800. And while we're doing that, we're going to hold the brakes. Okay, we're at 1800. We're gonna check our mags, our magnetos. The magnetos is what causes, it's like what the magnetos send electricity to the spark plugs allowing the engine to fire. So you wanna make sure that your magnetos work because if you don't, if they don't, then your spark plugs won't fire and you'll drop a cylinder or lose power in the cylinder. Each cylinder has two uh, spark plugs and there are two magnetos in each engine. So we're checking the one on the right and one on the left. Okay, see so if we have an RPM drop. We shouldn't drop uh, any more than uh, about 100. Okay, it's not too bad. cycle the prop and what we're looking for is we're looking for an rpm drop manifest profile pressure is going to change and our oil level is going to change so we want to make sure that that takes place and we're also just exercising making sure we're getting oil into the uh, prop governor checks out so today we're going to fly from KSET which is St. Charles Smart to Mexico Missouri specifically KMYJ neither of these airports are controlled just because it's going to make life a whole lot easier for this particular review so we can focus on the airplane I'll go ahead and bring down my RPM back to I gotta remember what. Kilo Sierra Echo Tango automated weather observation 2100 Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility 10. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, choose the best runway according to Garmin Pilots. The best runway is 1836. So, the uh, winds are calm, and uh, yeah, basically, we can choose any because they're so calm, we can choose any one. So, I'm going to see what we're closest to, and then we're just going to pick that one. So, we're going to go over to 18 because 18 is the closest. If I really want to be anal about it, I could. Well, it's calm, so maybe do a calculation here, but since ones are calm, we'll just go over to 1.8.
Yeah, that's the one thing my system really does stutter with this particular airplane. I don't know why that is, it just does. Make sure our flight controls are free and correct. Really should have done that. Um, that I didn't finish my checklist. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. You also get a chance to see the flight controls move. And we're gonna set our trim for takeoff. lower any flaps. This is a pretty long runway. Right, according to the POH, we're supposed to climb out at 110 uh, miles an hour. Our normal climb is 120 to 130, and our normal climb power should be 25 squared or 2500 RPM at 25 inches of manifold pressure. So typically on roll on uh, Roll out, I will advance it to full throttle, and then if I have to back it off to 25, 25, I will. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure we check final. And nobody's on final because I have the traffic turned off just to make life a little easier. I'm go ahead and take the runway. At this point, I'd be saying something like uh, St. Charles traffic. St. Charles traffic, uh, 701 Tango Delta, departing runway 18 St. Charles. Something to that effect, so let's go ahead and do that. Got all my lights on. And we are off. Again, because of the staggering, it's a little bit delayed. My reaction, I'm actually a much better pilot than this. And we're off. I like to use my track IR while I'm actually flying. So we're out of usable one way. Bring the gear up. Okay, gear is up. Got a nice, steady, positive climb. And we're going to turn to our heading. We're going to turn towards our course. It's going to be uh, westerly. So we're turning. And I'm going to climb up to uh, 4,500. I'm going to reduce my power at this time to 
so I'm trying to track IR, uh, track her off because it's just easy for me to push buttons when I'm not on the uh, tracker. Tracker makes it a little more difficult for me to push buttons anyway. All right, since we're no longer climbing, let's get back down to 4,500. I'm gonna bring the power out to somewhere around 20 inches of manifold pressure. Get back to my 4,500, uh, 4,500 foot altitude. out to see how the airplane trims. Probably trims like every other Microsoft uh, airplane does. It's, you know, very, it's not the, you're suddenly going to get a drown down or a sudden up. Not necessarily going to get a uh, infinite feel as they say. But that's every Microsoft airplane. So that's just every computer airplane for that matter. So we're just going to do our best here and hold it at 4,500. Now, from here, you have the autopilot. Now, here's the interesting thing about this autopilot. I am currently using the Alpha and Bravo uh, setup from Honeycomb. Natively speaking, if I turn this autopilot on, it will hold altitude. Okay, it'll hold altitude. Now, what's supposed to happen is that, or what I would like to happen is that the autopilot then tracks this line. In order to do that, you have to put it in the nav setting. And when you do that, it's actually turning, we'll see where it goes. But I think it's gonna turn away. Okay, so you put in that setting and you don't turn on the heading or the roll bug and it tracks it just fine. Now I actually did have uh, trouble with that earlier. So what I'm going to do now is not activate the autopilot from my Bravo throttle parger and I'm going to actually turn that off and then activate it on the airplane itself. So I'm going to turn this off. Pilot off. Now the autopilot is not on. Okay, so here we have the autopilot's on strictly from the the autopilot on the aircraft itself so there is no nav and it's on nav but you see it's not following so I would have to take roll off take, try to take hitting there we go let's see if it'll follow nav now so I took heading off that's what was on so it would follow the heading bug and it hasn't made any change even though so what I would have to do is if I wanted to, to turn and get back on my course, I would have to turn the heading bug on. So now it's on heading. Now it's following the heading bug. So to get back on course, I'm using the heading bug. autopilot and see how it holds a heading. I'm going to use it to get back on course. So let's just see what happens. So if you have some, if you have the Bravo quadrant from Honeycomb, 
if I turned on, if I switched on the nav button, then it would actually follow the GPS. But in the airplane itself, it won't do it. So my thought process is that the Century 3, this particular one, doesn't actually in the real life track the GPS. And there are some airplanes that don't do that. So I'm just going to see what we get here. And that's the uh, Mississippi River we're over. the heading bug pretty well. Five degree intercept to the course. So, if you notice here, this airplane has three fuel tanks it has a left fuel tank, right fuel tank, and an auxiliary fuel tank. Left, right, auxiliary, and they're all full. Cylinder head temperatures should change when I pull the mixture. They change a little bit, not really. Let's see what happens when I pull the cow flaps. So open the cow flaps, see if I get any change. Similar head temperature. Slight change. weather in according to Microsoft Flight Sim from the um, John the uh, weather from the internet. This is it. Like on those gears, uh, so that's just a landing light. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to press the nav button on my Bravo throttle quadrant, and what should take place, what should take place is the airplane will 
intercept the course line and then follow the course line. So we're going to see if that happens. Looks like it's doing it. And we're cruising along at 165 knots. The one thing we can I can't say about this airplane is that it is fast. Particularly fast. Okay, it looks like we have intercepted the course and it's holding the course. At 165 knots. It's gonna take us 15 minutes to get there. The airplane is also holding uh, altitude really well. So, uh, well done, mine heart. Well done. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the weather for Mexico, Missouri. If I can. Since the winds are calm, I'm going to refer to my Garmin pilot to see what the suggested runway is. And they're going to say it's uh, runway 24. We have a, that would be one way, uh, runway 24. And three knot right down the runway, so we're going to take that one. So the idea is now we're going to enter uh, left traffic for runway 24. We still got about eight minutes. So, go ahead and do my before landing checklist. Okay, so seats, seats and shoulder harnesses fastened, obviously. Excuse me, obviously. Some fuel selectors on the main tank, we got them on both. I'm gonna go ahead and enrich our mixture a little bit. There we go. And then from there, we're supposed to be set between 22, 2200 and 2500 RPM for our downwind. Airspeed should be up to 120 to 130 miles an hour. Uh, our gear should be down on downwind and the maximum we can bring our gear down is 140 miles an hour so keep that in mind before bringing the gear down because it's going to also help us slow down if we need to uh, flaps half and then we've got to turn base we should be at 100 miles an hour and 90 on final if we have full flaps 100 if there are no flaps we should also have our our uh, props full forward, and from there we, you know, operate as no as needed. And 
new altimeter setting is 2089, so I just set that. Okay, our pattern altitude is going to be somewhere around uh, 1,800 feet. So shortly we're going to descend to 1,800 feet. Alright, so we'll go ahead and start our descent. Our pilot is coming off. is in sight right there this time I'm going to turn on all the lights the landing lights are on nav lights strobe lights are on See and be seen, as they say. Still have about a thousand feet to lose. start our base because this is 2-4 right here so I'm going to go ahead and start my base turn alright gear down Fuel selective valves on both. Mixture's full rich. First night to flaps. And now we're going to turn final. And if it's in real life, I would be announcing final, but it's not real life. I feel the need to do so right now. And technically, you don't have to, but it's good that you do. Turn final a little bit early, so 
What's happening? Gear down. Props full forward. And I landed a little long, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and exit right here. Threshold. Bring the flaps up. All right. Mexico Memorial. All right, so we'll go ahead and shut down. Say mixture. Mags, Avionics, Master. All right, everybody, that was a trip with the Lionheart Simulations Blanca Super Viking. I like it. I know it does make my system a little jerkier than other aircraft do, do but I do like this airplane, so. I'll give it a thumbs up. If you have a higher end system, you probably won't experience the same thing I'm experiencing. So, yeah, I, I enjoy it. I think I, I thought it was a. I think it's a pretty. I think it's a pretty decent airplane. So, I hope you enjoyed the flight. If you haven't had a chance to, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.